In this video, we're gonna go through all of the historic Macallan Royal releases. So welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Mark Littler and I'm a whiskey broker, whiskey consultant and whiskey market analyst. And if you're looking to buy or sell whiskey, head to marklittler.com and there's everything that you need there. Now, as we've mentioned in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of the Macallan Royal, or Royal releases that have come out to date. And why are we doing this? Well, of course, we're just on the eve of the Platinum Jubilee. So there's a bit of speculation that we might see a Platinum Jubilee bottling. And I'm gonna address that right at the end to see how feasible that is that we're gonna see one or not. So the first bottle that's on our lineup is the Macallan 25 year old Silver Jubilee by Gordon and MacPhail. Now, this is an official bottling. I'm calling out that this is an official bottling, even though some of you may believe it to be an independent bottling because it's slapped over with Gordon and McPhail. But you've got to remember that until the 1980s, there was a law in Scotland that stated that distilleries couldn't bottle their own product. So this is why you have the likes of Campbell, Hope and King and Gordon and McPhail, principally those two, but there were a few others, doing all of McAllen's bottlings for them. So when the Silver Jubilee happened in 1977, that this range was released and it wasn't just McAllen that was tied up with this lineup there was also a Glen Livet, a Talisker, a Glen Farkless and the McAllen. Now what's interesting on these is that they all feature the official trademarks of the distillery so on the McAllen as you can see it's got the official McAllen logo on there so we're calling this out as being one of the official McAllen royal releases and it is a really sensational bottle and it's also quite a cheap bottle. You can buy these on the market for about two, two and a half thousand pounds at the moment, which for a 25 year old Macallan, by any standards, is good value. To have the association with the, 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 the Silver Jubilee is even better. So I would say that this is probably one of the best value bottles that you'll see in this lineup, even though it's probably one of the, or some of the hardest to find, especially compared to the modern releases. Now, the next bottle that we've got on our list is also a Silver Jubilee bottling. It's a uh, Macallan. It's also a 25 year old. It's a Magnum though. So a Magnum is 150 centilitres rather than 75 centilitres. And it was released in association with Christopher & Co. Now, Christopher & Co were a very famous wine merchant in London all the way through the 19th century, through the 20th century, but they stopped trading in around the 1980s. They were that good, they received four or five royal warrants through the, through the 19th century. So they were official suppliers to the royal household and they were just around the corner from the palace as well. So it's easy to see how that association and connection could have done. Now, this bottle is the rarest of all the bottles on this Macallan Royal lineup. There's very few of them ever sold. And when they do sell, they, let, let's again say only, about seven, eight thousand pounds but this is a magnum of 25 year old Macallan, a magnum of 25 year old Macallan. Some of the things that may detract from it, the labels are always in shocking condition. Now this is, I'm taking a guess here, that this is to do with who was selling it. So Christopher & Co were wine merchants, who were they supplying? Probably their clients who were more interested in wine because in the 1970s, single malt whiskey, not really much of a big thing. Macallan hadn't really started its, its, its single malt journey really to many ways. That really started in the 1980s with David Holmes and people like that. So these bottles I'm guessing were probably cellared in cellars, in damp cellars, rather than being in upstairs, you know, in, in rooms that are nice and, and dry. And if you wanna watch how humidity affects bottles in your collection, watch our video about how to store your whiskey and we'll put a link up here for you to watch or up there, which side it's on. It's on this side, isn't it? It's up there. Now, again, seven, 8,000 pounds, yes, it's a lot of money, but it's a magnum. How many magnums of official Macallan has there been? There's a few independent bottlings, there's a signatory vintage bottling that was done for the millennium, I can't think of many official Macallan bottlings that have been released in the for, you know, the Magnum format, especially for one that's as rare as this and has only appeared maybe 10, 20 times at auction in its entire life. So we're into the 1980s now and we're probably into more familiar territory for most of you and we're on now onto the first Macallan royal marriage. This is Charles and Diana released in 1981 and it's a beautiful bottle of whiskey. It's probably one of my favourite ones. It also suffers quite a lot with poor levels. The levels on these bottles are always 
quite low like at the top of the neck is quite a good level if you're even at the top of the shoulder that's still about okay which is not normally passable for many bottles like private eye and things like that that would come later but charles and diana they married in 1981 to huge fanfare i think it was reported to really have cost 57 million pounds to put the wedding on and everything like that and the whiskey itself is quite interesting so charles was born in 1948 diana was born in 1961 so the mccallan royal marriage is a vatting of those two casks or a cask from each of those vintages and vatted into one and 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 and, and, and released in as as that now it's quite rare to find this bottle with the original wooden box but it did come with a wooden box in certain instances if you know the exact reasons for that i think it might have been the export market so america and italy you tend to find most of the italian and the american bottlings that come with the boxes and you know interestingly enough the american bottling of this is a little label just underneath the bottom the, or a little uh, stick out along the bottom of the label that identifies it as being an american export or import and they make quite good money they do tend to make a premium now the charles and diana it's not a scarce bottle there's hundreds of them being sold on the market you can find them pretty much every month in an auction in scotland and at the moment they're making around five thousand pounds with a box they can be up to seven thousand pounds but this is really one of the core staples of any mccallan collection i would say it's an absolutely legendary bottle and it's it's just beautiful and it's just around this time that mccallan's advertising machine started to gear up and this is no no surprise that we start to see more and more of these royal releases going forward so we've gone forward quite a few decades we're now in 2002 and we're looking at the 1952 50 year golden jubilee decanter that is an official bottling but it was commissioned by the whiskey exchange in 2002 now there's several different or two different sizes of this decanter there's a 700 or yeah 700 mil decanter and there's also a 150 milliliter decanter there were only 50 bottles of these produced and they're absolutely sensational the whiskey itself contained in this beautiful etched glass decanter was actually quite special because it is a, ma a marriage of 50 different vintages now when you look at the promotional material it says that it's something from like the 30s 40s and 50s but if it's a 50 year old whiskey released in 2002 the latest vintage has to be 1952 so you would assume that by vintage they're meaning year as in the, the full year as in 1952 you would have to go all the way back to sort of like 1902 to get those figures you know 50 different casks blended together or 50 different vintages blended together unless they're talking about a vintage being a date as in the 5th of march 1952 but either way there's 50 different whiskies that go into this it's super rare on the market last sold in 2019 for seven and a half thousand pounds so goodness knows what one of these would make on the market now but it's also one of these bottles that not a lot of people understand or know about so will there really be a lot of auction fever if one came up probably not and it's now that we start moving into these super modern releases in my opinion that the market really stands to, starts to ramp up so we're now in 2011 and you're starting to see a bit of a trend here mccallan have normally made a release to celebrate important royal events so in 2011 it was the marriage of william and catherine and they made another release it was released at 150 pounds i believe this one and 2011 as you'll see we had releases in 2011 2012 and 2013 in 2011 it was the william and catherine royal marriage comes in a beautiful sort of like brushed steel effect box only 1000 of these were released and these are just going through the roof at the moment these william and catherine ones are selling more now for more than the one released in 1981 you know the charles and the diana so 30 years difference and it's the modern release that's commanding more money at the moment is the presentation better you know if you like a box yeah it comes with a box it's not the best box in the world personally i prefer the charles and diana box but yeah it comes with a cardboard box it's quite current you can google it you can find records of it you can see oh my gosh it was released at 150 pounds and now it's five or six thousand pounds you know i get that but from from a longevity perspective if i had five or six grand to go and buy a royal marriage a royal marriage i say that because you'll understand in a moment the royal marriage i'd always go for charles and diana this one it's okay but i think this one's maybe a little bit hyped at the moment but who knows the market is the market now we're in 2012 and we've got the second of these trio of releases and 
probably based on the success of the Catherine and William bottling. This one was released in 2012 and it was it got up in price, £350 now, and there were 2012 bottles. Now this one is the Macallan Diamond Jubilee, and this one, wow, like this bottle just before we were sort of filming this. The record was sort of like seven, eight thousand pounds. Then it went up to eight and a half thousand pounds. And then just this weekend, it's passed ten thousand pounds. One of these bottles have sold for. So it's just, you know, it was released in 2012 to celebrate the 60th, you know, 60 years of Queen Elizabeth being on the throne. And there's lots of sort of little, cute little things that tie up with the date. So the, you know, she was, she was declared queen in 1952 and the ABV is 52% of, uh, you know, there's a marriage of cast the first week of June, which is when the first, when, when the Queen, uh, the Queen's Jubilee is normally celebrated. And that's from when one of the casks was sort of filled there, released in 2012, obviously with 2012 bottlings. So it's, there's a lot of sort of like twee little things going on with the numbers, but the design of it, you can't really fault the design of it. The It's, it's unusual in the fact that on the front of the bottle there's a ceramic cameo or a ceramic oval uh, mount that's, that's applied to the bottle that was designed by Arnold Martin. Now, eagle-eyed viewers may recognise the cameo image that's on this bottle if you've looked at any British stamps because Arnold Martin designed or was commissioned to make the portrait of the Queen that blesses all of our stamps in the UK, unless it's Christmas or something like that and you buy a, a fancy one. Now, it's interesting that on stamps, the monarch always faces left, but on coins, it flips between left and right, left and right. And on this Macallan bottling, it faces the other way to the stamp. She's pointing, you know, she's facing to the right. And this little cameo is surrounded with a little metal frame and some ribbons. Now, it also came in a box. We've got a box here. Uh, the, the Queen celebrating Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee 2012. Why have we got a box? Well, this was actually issued in, in, in two boxes. So the first box was actually cosmetically damaging the bottles. So they re-released the box and everybody who owned this and, and, and was still the original owners at the time received that second box. So most of these come with the second box. Most people don't like having the first box because if you put it in the wrong one, they're, they're basically identical, will, will damage your bottling. But the pricing of these is just incredible. 10,000 pounds, is it worth 10,000 pounds? <laughs> The market believes so but look at that disparity between you know you've got ten thousand pounds for that you're looking at five six grand for the william and kate one you're looking at five grand for the 1981 you know it's almost double the value of them so it's, it's it's slightly out of alignment in my opinion but it is a beautiful looking bottle there is a lot of interest at the moment with the royal you know the royal family especially with this platinum jubilee coming up so Let's see what happens. Let's see if that price can be maintained because that is the key. A single record isn't anything. It's about the, being able to maintain that pricing that's important. So now we're in 2013 and Macallan have released another royal bottling. This time it's the coronation, the 60th anniversary of the Queen's coronation. Now what's the difference between that and the 60 years of Diamond Jubilee? Well, the Queen was actually declared, declared Queen in 1953 when her father died, but she wasn't crowned or coronated until 1953. That's why the 60th anniversary of the coronation came out in 2013, 60 years after the date that the queen was crowned. Now, this, I, I, I just, I, I love this bottle. Wait, probably tomorrow, the day after you're viewing this video, if you're viewing this on release, there'll be another video coming out that you really wanna watch, but this is just a sen sensational bottle. There's actually two bottles in this release, two 35 centiliter bottlings. One is a bourbon cask fin or bourbon cask maturation. The other is a sherry cask maturation. If you want to understand what a sherry cask is and isn't, we've got a really good in-depth video about sherry casks and it'll probably ruin your whole opinion of sherry casks going forward, but you need to know the truth. Now, it's quite rare to get a bourbon cask on a, on a Macallan, so that's, that's one reason that I like it. The portraits as well are really beautiful. So these 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 contain official these bottles are labelled with official portraits of the Queen, and I just like the fact that there's two bottles. Unusually as well, they're sealed under wax. Now I can't think of many official Macallan releases that have been sealed under wax. There's some of them in the Inspiration series that were sealed under wax, but these were replicas of 
18th or 19th century bottlings, I beg your pardon. So these were replicas of 19th century bottlings, so therefore were replicating the wax. But this is the first time that a McCallum bottling was using wax to seal in, in, a, in a modern use, and he haven't really used it since. The wax can, in some instances, be prone to, to breaking. You tend to see this more on some of like the, the Ardbeg bottlings than, than the McCallans, uh, than other bottlings. These ones I've not experienced cracking before, but I'm yet to be tested. So, and again, there was another sort of twee thing with the numbers here. There were 19, 1,953 of these bottles released or sets of these released. 350 pound release price again. And again, look at the prices. These have started to really jump in value. And for good reason, these bottles, in my opinion, have been quite underpriced for a long time and are only just going through that correction. If you go back to May, 2021, you could have bought these at two and a half thousand pounds. Flash forward to May, 2022, you need four and a half, five thousand pounds hammer price. So five thousand pound hammer price equates to about six thousand pound cost after fees. So it's 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 starting to catch up. It's now in the realms and in the mix of the other ones. And from a personal you know, from a personal perspective, I feel like this is the best one. And there's, there's a few other things about this. Watch our next video. We'll explain more in that one. But yeah, it just really is a beautiful, solid set. Well. <sighs> Everyone's asking, is there gonna be a Platinum Jubilee bottling? And who knows? There are some people at McCallum that know. Officially, I've spoken to some friends who are quite close in the industry to McCallum, and they said that there's not gonna be an official bottling, but maybe that it's all hush-hush. So, okay, why would McCallum release an, a, a bottling for this Jubilee? Well, they've got prior form. They've, they've released lots of Jubilee bottlings, lots of Royal Commemorative bottlings in the past. So if history, was to sort of be carried forward, of course they would release one. But why wouldn't they release one? And I think there's some interesting factors in here. Look, we're in the middle of a war in Europe, massive supply chain issues. So how much inventory did McAllen want to stock, you know, to hold for this event? So, you know, they can't just say, oh, we're gonna release it and, and, and sort of sell it. You know, the boxes might have taken a year from, you know, from pre-production to go into production to delivery. There may have been holdups with that. The glass, likewise, as anyone in the industry knows, casks and glasses or casks, casks and glasses. There's a big, big holdup, big delays in, in supply chains at the moment. So they might not have been able to get the glass in time. Another one, you've got to look at this realistically. The Queen has not been in the best of health recently. So would they have wanted to put all that investment in and let's try and say this in the most tactful way that we can on the chance that the queen didn't make it to the platinum jubilee you know these are capitalists we're all capitalists not all capitalists a lot of other capitalists in the west they might have been looking at this from a very economic forecast profit loss projection and what are the chances of something happening that would have delayed or cancelled the platinum jubilee there is obviously something that could have gone wrong there. So they might not have wanted to put all their eggs into that basket, but who knows? Let's see what's gonna happen. Because if it's gonna happen, it will probably happen in the next week or two. Probably all get an email saying, well, hey, it's released, get on the ballot. And of course, if you can get the chance to get on the ballot, get as many as accounts open as you can, get all your friends and family and your neighbors and aunties and uncles to apply, because as soon as this is released, the secondary market's gonna go absolutely wild. So get as many of these as you can. So there we have it. It's a quick overview of the McAllen Royal Bottlings and they are plentiful. There's lots on the market of them, but which one do you pick and which one do you go for? If you want to know which one to think of as your best investment, get in touch and we'll be happy to give you some advice. If you want to just buy one because you like the look of it, buy the one you like the look of. If you've got any questions, get in the comments below and look out for the next video that's going to come online hopefully tomorrow and you'll be in for a treat.